Welcome back to Runiverse. I'm Andrew, and in this video, I'm continuing my playthrough of Robomon as I go into the jetty out of the cave. This is a full spoiler playthrough, so if you are not interested in spoilers, just watch as much as you want to see and then shut it down until you get your own copy to play through. Or if you want to start from the beginning of the story, or if you're not caught up on the rules, because I'll be breezing through a lot of that, check out the first episode of the series, the tutorial playthrough, where I kick off the game through a lot of the me mechanisms going on. And this is a prototype as well, so anything and everything is subject to change. It is currently raising money on GameFound, so check that out. Link in the description if you're interested in your own copy. But with that out of the way, here we are in the jetty. We're coming out of this tunnel here, thematically speaking, mechanically again. The whole map is available to us. There's a QR code you can scan to listen to the music. We'll hit that and then get to know the jetty a little bit better. Before Port Platinum was completed, the wharf was the main hub for cargo ships to transport goods to and from Alloy. However, now it's more for fishing and enjoying the beach. Some ships still come and go, but the overall lack of sea traffic has created a welcoming environment for many different fish populations. Several types of water-dwelling Robomon can also be found in the water if you have the right kind of fishing rod. According to Robomon HQ, some of the oldest known Robomon models can be found there if you're able to go deep enough. Deep enough? I'm interested. Let's also look at these charts down here. So there are a few of these search icons we'll be able to roll on this chart. And there's a treasure chest where we'll be able to roll on this chart. We still don't have a fishing rod or the rules on how that works. Maybe we can, maybe we can find one here. And then over here is the Robomon Finder chart. Again, you would roll 2d6. This is an interesting chart with 1, 3, 5, 7, and 2, 4, 6 if we want to try to find some wild Robomon here. And let's also take a nice leisurely look at the whole map before we dive in. The tunnel where we came out, people on the pier, one crazy looking guy. All right, so what to do first? We as well do the searches right out of the gate. So those are gonna be one, two, three, D4 rolls to see what we find. One is a battery, four is a small repair kit, and a three is a wire. It's another battery. In my inventory here, we'll add our seventh wire and our third small repair kit. And let's check that treasure chest too. That'll be another D4 on the other chart. Three is a large reprogrammer. That's my first one of those and would let me roll a d8 to try to reprogram a Robomon. All right, let's talk to this guy first, although he looks like the type of guy who's going to want to battle. That'll be entry 1217 in the adventure book. And I was right. Let's move this out of the way. Let's set up our battle. Hit the music. Ranger Howard says they thought the excavations in the cave might upset the locals, but it's just a minor inconvenience. That's our second mining pun. I like it. He has Robomon 24 and 25, goes around to the verse stack. 24 is a Tortellian and 25 is a Spider Bite. These, Tortellian and Spider Bite. 25 here is the Frog. Their numbers here say 10 and 31, so I'm going to punch these out from here. We get number 10, the Tortellian. And 31, you can see on the back, there's a little guy peeking through there. Punch that out and we get the Spider Bite. Those can take their places on the map. Sure, we'll look at these cards again as we resolve their turns. I think Armadigo might not be super suited for this battle. So let's see, who on my team would be a better choice? Might actually be Treadle. Let's have a Pandal over here with three damage still on him. All right, let's try Reginair and Treadle. We haven't had that combo yet. One's very fast and one's very slow. Treadle here and Reginair there. Assign the initiative order. So Spider Bite is an 81 speed, so we'll be first. Urgenair is 66. Treadle is third at 28. And Turtle Turtellian is last at 5. Very slow. Which means Spider Bite will go first. So we need to roll a d4 to see what it wants to do. A 1 means it wants to target the Robomon that is a water type, or if it can't, Robomon that is an earth type. I don't have either of those, so it'll just target whoever it's closest. And again, one is going to indicate that it wants to use web, which has six range. I think Reginair is the closest. Six spaces away, one, two, three, four, five, six, where the range attack means the spider bite only has to move one, two, three out of four of its movement in order to make that range attack. Yellow terrain is difficult terrain, so most Robomon can't move into it, but you can use range attacks over it. So one, two, three, four, five, six range. It's going to use web, which is one damage. 
but it is a grass type attack or nature type and nature has disadvantage against air which Reginair is so spider bite will be rolling the red disadvantage modifier die to deal that one damage it also has the trap icon so just going over its icons it's that just indicates that it's a nature type attack that is the trap icon which we're about to do and then range six six dots and one damage. So I'm gonna roll the red disadvantage modifier die plus a d4. D4 is for the trap. Rolled a miss, so no damage to Reginair, and the trap die rolled a four, which means that doesn't that part doesn't do anything either. A one on the trap die would indicate that the target becomes trapped, can't move, and automatically has disadvantage on its next turn. So that is Spider Bite's turn, just moving a little bit and doing nothing. And I forgot to roll my dice. Definitely gonna need those. We're gonna roll seven action dice. See how much movement and attacking we have available. I also need to give my Robomon their action tokens. And Reginair has fan attack, which is an air type attack. Air does have advantage against grass. So if I can get that off against Spider Bite, I'll get to roll the green modifier die. It has range three, which means I could be here, except for Reginair can't actually stand here on the difficult terrain. Tailspin let, lets it move as though it had flying. Doesn't let it actually well, stay here like a flying Robomon could. I think I'll use one movement die to move Reginair up to three spaces. I can't save any of that movement for later, but I'm just going to use one of it. And then I'm going to use Tailspin to move one, two, three over the difficult terrain. And then we're going to use Fan Attack. I think I'm going to max it out. So Reginair doesn't have a ton of energy, but I'm going to convert this Wild die into a special attack die, spending one energy. Fan attack costs two, so that's a total of three. We're gonna use this special attack die as well, along with the attack token as a special attack symbol. So we do have a total of three, which means we use the third damage number. If we only had one special attack symbol, we would do one damage. If we had two special attack symbols, we'd do three damage. This time we have four, so it's only one different damage. Maybe that's not worth spending an energy on. Yeah, three and four is only one different. I'm gonna save that wild die for later or maybe I'm just saving the energy here. So we're going to do three damage, but air strong against grass. We're going to roll the green modifier damage die plus two is five damage. Forgot to give spider bite its armor tokens. It actually has two armor and each of those armor blocks two damage. So that five is being reduced down to one actual damage, but spider bite only has five health. So that's four remaining. Retellion also should have gotten two armor tokens. So we'll keep that for next. I'm a little rusty from my last recording, I guess. And that will conclude Reginair's turn, meaning it is actually Treadle. You can spend this movement die to move two, and this guy's really slow, and this Tertullian is very slow as well. I'm going to use the action token on the defense side as a movement as well, and move two more. I could use the wild as a more movement, but he couldn't reach anybody to attack anyway, so we'll let it be Tertullian's turn, who is going to do something. A two means Tertullian is going to target itself on a two, and the move is going to be protect. Gains another armor on itself or a teammate. Oh wow, and its armor tokens prevent three damage each. This guy is building up some health. So that's nine damage just in armor. That will conclude the round, so we'll re-roll the dice and start back up with Spider Bite. It's a lot of wilds and armor. And then we'll just roll up Spider Bite's turn with a four. It wants to target itself with Pounce. So Pounce means it comes off the board until its next turn, at which point it goes next to my Robomon with the least health. So Spider Bite up in the sky. Now Reginair lost its target. Got a bunch of wilds, but I picked two very low energy Robomon. And Tertullian has a lot of health. So I'm going to use Reginair's Tailspin to move three. I think I need to save the actual movement die for Treadle. He's now one, two, three away. Now this hasn't happened yet, but if I do lose my Robomon, I can send out new ones. I just haven't had to yet so far. And they can be defeated by running out of hit points, but also by running out of energy. I think I'm actually just going to save Reginair's energy for attacks against the Spider Bite where, be, where they will be more effective. No, I mean, I guess it can... No, I guess because Robomon can overspend their energy, I can get two more fan attacks out of him. So I think one more fan attack should finish off Spider Bite. So we can afford to use one now. So I'll spend two energy. It's range three. So one, two, three, we can do range. 
and targeting as we're using diagonals, even though movement is only orthogonals. We're going to spend the action token and this die both as special attack symbols, meaning this is a fan attack for three. No advantage or disadvantage, so just the black modifier die. We do need multiples of two though, preferably, and we're currently looking at three. Three and a zero, so that's just going to get rid of one armor. Still progress. So I had spent its last energy to change this into a third symbol to make it four as an even number. That would have been Reginair's final turn, and we still could have rolled a negative number with the black die. Not worth it. Treadle is next, and it's just going to use movement and movement again. One, two, three, four. Not going to spend any energy to move extra. And then Tertullian uses two, which is self-protect again, getting that armor right back. Round three, and this is already feeling like one of my longer battles. We have Spider Bite first, so it appears using Pounce near my Robolon with the least health. We're actually tied, so sure, why not just put it next to both of them? And then it will play its turn normally, and it pounces again. So it comes right back off the board. Really doesn't want to get hit by Reginair. Now I'm thinking I will just skip Reginair's turn. Yeah, I think I will. I'm just going to do nothing with Reginair. We got plenty of movement for Treadle. We really just need two dice. Move four spaces. I'll take both of those. And now we can go ahead and use Fertilizer Bomb. So this is meant to have a nature symbol on it. So it is a special attack, nature type special attack. Nature has advantage against water. We only need two special attack symbols to get five base damage. So we'll use this and this and have two. So that's five damage with advantage. Crit doubles five to ten. Six damage is blocked by three armor and four more goes through, meaning Tertullian is down to two. And I forgot, crits, you actually you roll again. Not only is the damage doubled to ten, but we got a plus two to twelve, and that was a one shot through all the armor. I knew that plotting across the map was worth it. So we just took out six damage in armor and six health and one shotted Tertullian. Now Spider Bite is going to come back. These dice available to us. A little bit of armor. And still a tie on lowest health Robomon. I'm going to put it over here. Because if it does attack, it'll be more likely to have to hit Reginair. I assume I get... Again, I get, assume I get to choose because they have the same health. I'm taking advantage of the situation. Got a three. So this time it wants to bite our lowest health Robomon. Again a tie. So we'll choose Robomon. Reginair. Bite is four damage with a regular modifier. Zero, so it's four damage. And I guess I'm going to use its token as a block and this die to block all four damage. Then Reginair can take its turn and we'll use this as a special. Plus we'll spend an energy to make this wild into a special. We are overspending. You're allowed to spend as much energy as you want. Even if you don't have it, you will shut down that Robomon but they would have shut down at zero anyway. So we're going to negative one to change the wild. Or we're going to zero to change the wild into a special attack, and then we are spending two more to go to negative two to use fan attack with two, which means it's an attack for three, but it has advantage, so three plus two is five. There's actually no way on that advantage die that we wouldn't finish off Spider Bite. So that team worked out pretty well. I was a little bit worried. We did end up losing Reginair to energy, but fortunately Robomon recharged their energy completely after battle. So it is fit as a fiddle again, and we didn't take any damage. And why not just have all of our Robomon team on display? I currently have six, so let's just have all six on the table, and we can choose from them when we go into battle. treadle has been a real MVP. I'm going to go ahead and search these trees as we come out and over here. 1017. There's a grove of trees by the dock that catches your eye. Expecting perhaps a Robomon or some local fruit, you're surprised to find instead a large wire tangled in the brush. Curiosity gets the better of you when you follow the wire down through the trees and closer to the water. You see out in the bay a quiet sea with a group of partially submerged magna crab prepared to dredge the ocean for debris and trash. However, they are not moving and even causing mayhem as local fishermen get their hooks stuck on the immobile machines. Looking at the wire, you see it leads to a large hatch marked Aquatic Recovery Command System. It's unlocked and clearly turned off. You look again at the wire and see that the loose end doesn't quite reach the panel. You go and untangle what you can, and with the end sparking, struggle to reach the panel. Something has chewed the wire to bits. Now, without a way to move power, the panel remains off, and so do the robots offshore. 
We do recall looking at the panel that command systems don't need a lot of power, and even with the wire sparking it as it is, we know perhaps from some mistakes in the past that it isn't a deadly shock. You could complete the circuit yourself. Now I'm prompted to make an endurance check. So uh, let's look at my character sheet. Endurance has negative one next to it. Um, none of my Robomon are going to help, but you got to do what you got to do. You're the hero of the alloy region. So uh, let's roll 2d6 to make a skill check, and we'll be subtracting one from the sum of these dice. Four plus one is five. Five minus one is four, which incidentally would fall into that zero to six category. Taking the wire in one hand and pressing your foot against the input of the panel, you grit your teeth and make contact. You feel the surge of power and you seize up as you stand there, watching the Robomon in the bay come to life and continue shifting. Some returning to shore with nets of trash, but the pain becomes too great too quickly and you let go, hoping you got something good. Game one coolant. Hey, that was a good reward for my terrible skill check. That's my first coolant. I think that is one of the components you can use to upgrade Robomon. I'm not sure. I haven't gotten any schematics for upgrades yet. So next, let's talk to these people on the pier, starting with this crazy, frantic looking guy at 3317. So this is another skill check. This time he is hooked something big and getting thrashed around, getting pulled off the pier or getting his fishing pole wrenched away from him. I need to make an agility check to start. My agility is actually plus one and I get another plus one from Reginair who can help out. So this one will be at plus two. Still puts me only at six, which means we both fall into the water. Fishing rod is lost and it says something falls out of my bag as I hit the water. So it doesn't say explicitly, but I think I'm going to have to erase something from my inventory. I have seven wire. I don't need that much. Down to six. I wonder if these batteries count. Maybe I should lose a battery. I'm going to lose a battery instead. Well, now that I'm soaking wet, I kind of want to go talk to some other people, but maybe I need to dry off first. Let's spend some time looking for a Robomon with the Robomon Finder. So I'm going to spend another battery for that and roll 2d6 again. Five and three, this time down here on the Finder. It's like the rarest Robomon is number seven, but it would take a lot of batteries to change my dice into that. So let's just spend one more battery to change this three into a four. I mean a two. And now at the two five intersection, we have Robomon number three. Pull this out. Is that the, the starter? No, it's a fruit flyer. It's another air type. I kind of want some more types, some electric or water. This is what we found. So let's see what we can do. Let's move this up here for now. And this is going to be a wild Robomon battle. So we're not going to use a grid. We're not going to use movement. I do need to choose two Robomon to battle with though. I chose Reginair and Sparky, got all their energy. Fruit Flyer will be first, so give it the number one here, and we need to roll up our action dice. There we go, put these over here. And I did roll one timer, so this symbol has movement and timer. Movement won't be used in a wild battle. The timers are, we, did, we ignored those in a competitive battle. Now we're gonna add one time token to Fruit Flyer. And if it has four time tokens on it, and it has its turn, it will run away. And since it's first, that is a bit more threatening. So that die is basically bad for us. And then we roll to see what Fruit Flyer wants to do. Three means it wants to use Mist Attack against a Water, Earth, or Electric type, which we don't have. So I guess we can just choose. Maybe Sparky can tank that for us. Well, this is actually interesting. This is the first time I've seen a, an Air type with Nature type attack. So. It's a mismatched type between its type and its special attacks. I don't know if that's intended, but I think it's cool and I'm going to play it as printed here. The adjacency text and the range don't really do anything, so it's just going to be a nature type attack for four damage. I think we can choose what to target, so I'm actually going to choose Reginair because... Oh no, air type! Because a nature type attack has disadvantage against air. So that'll help us out. We'll roll the red die for that four damage attack. Minus two is two. And let's just use this defend die to block that. Got a couple specials here. And I'm going to use this and these two to make a four damage fan attack, which is going to cost two energy. Four damage with the black modifier is minus one, so that's three, which means we just break one shield, unfortunately. And then for Sparky, I'm going to have him use two energy to change two wilds into special attack. Actually, we just need one, so let's get one energy back. But then we are going to use this action token and two energy to use his repair ability. It says target Robomon receives two health. 
So we'll take two damage off of Reginair. We can use this wild combat as an opportunity to heal our damaged Robomon. Hopefully that's legit. Now we'll end the round, so roll up seven more dice. Hopefully not too many purple symbols. Zero purple symbols. Fruit Flyer's not going anywhere yet. I do need to roll to see what it wants to do. Three is the same thing as last time. Missed attack against types we don't have, so we'll choose Reginair again to give it disadvantage. And this time it is four minus three damage, so only one. Although that's still a question of whether we want to block it, which we may as well, because we have the die for it. This time we rolled a bunch of basic attack symbols. We'll have Reginair use Scratch with... Uh, I guess we really just need one die, because it can use the token as a second die, so that's three damage. Plus a modifier of minus two, so only one, that's no damage. Maybe we need Sparky to be attacking, but that's fine, we can do that too. So Sparky can use Bite with three, for three, plus two is five. So now we get to break the armor and actually deal three damage, putting Fruit Flyer down to three, which is in range of reprogramming territory. Let's roll up for the next round. And one timer. That's two out of four, but we're going to try to reprogram it imminently, I think. Well, that's a weird D4 position. One means it wants to tackle our highest speed Robomon, which is Reginair. Tackle does two damage. Zero, so just two. And this time we can't, we don't have a die, but we'll use the token to block it. Can I reprogram it with three health left? Let's give it a shot. I have two medium re reprogrammers, so I'm going to use one of those. It's flat. Medium reprogrammer means I use a D6. It has three health left, so I need a three or higher, modified by wherever it lands. Two plus three is five, so that is plenty successful. And I only have one medium repro reprogrammer though. And do 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 do, Fruit Flyer joins our team. So here's our current roster. The first we need to put Fruit Flyer back into the verse stack and then get card number 33 from here. And this is the actual Robomon stack. And take a look what it's what it would look like on our team. Six health, eight energy, an agility bonus. It has flying, tackle, fruit cannon, and mist attack. This one seems pretty strong. And here again, we see it as an air type with nature type special attack. So must be intentional, right? Question is, who's getting replaced? I kind of like having Sparky as that kind of healer. Reginair went in with three damage and came out with one. I'm leaning toward cutting a fire type, probably the Burn Viper. Not because it's not good, just I haven't even used it yet, and if I have a fire type, I'll probably use Pandal. But the thing I like about Burn Viper is the intelligence bonus. I do like having plus four in my intelligence, and that is a draw against, a strike against Sparky is, doesn't have stat boost. But I think I'll take the plus three on intelligence as good enough, and Burn Viper is going into the save box. And Fruit Flyer is joining our team. Now that I think about it, Trito might need to go soon, although that's our other intelligence boost. Yeah, now we have two Robomon with nature type attacks. The Trito was great for its fertilizer bomb, but it's also very slow. Fruit Flyer is a lot faster, three speed and flying. But anyway, let's uh, save the team management for later. And now that we're all dried off, talk to some more people on the pier, starting with this woman here, 2017. She wants to battle. Angler Bree says, I may seem like a washed up old timer, but I catch on quick. She has a Propulfin and the Tertullian. We get to see that turtle guy again. And these both swim, so they're going to be going through the water. Technically, we can go through the water too, but I think this is going to be a great opportunity for Fruit Flyer to fly over the water and use nature attacks against the water Robomon. I think I'm just going to use Treetle and Fruit Flyer. So this is the first time we're seeing Fruit Flyer's tactical token. On top of that, I forgot to grab its journal entry. So let's see. Fruit Flyer spreads pollen and seeds to promote healthy plant life. It's going to join the beautiful journal that we're keeping for Gramp as our seventh entered Robomon. Very nice. Now let's see how this battle goes. Couple, yeah, some movement to get us started. Oh, and we should set initiative. 82, 71, 28, and 5. The Pulfin goes first with a 3, which means it wants to use Water Spout against a Fire or Rock type. We don't have one of those. So it's just going to move 6 with a Swim Speed and then go Range Attack 3 spaces away. Closest Robomon would be 
Fruit Flyer. Range of threes, one, two, three. Move six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's just far enough. End its turn in the water here and then shoot that water spout. Water is not disadvantaged against the Fruit Flyer's air type. It's gonna do four damage with the black die and push three. This is a tough start. All right, four plus one is five plus three push damage because Fruit Flyer is at the edge of the map here. That's eight damage. They're definitely gonna defend two. Also has an armor and two armor on the Tertullian. I have to block at least one more time because Fruit Flyer only has six hit points. So, I mean, I guess it can spend one energy to make this wild into a block. And now it's taking four. I'm gonna go ahead and spend another one to make this other wild into a block and still take two damage. Fruit Flyer gets to go next, but now we don't have any special for it to work with. So it's gonna have to make a basic tackle. You can move for three. One, two, three. Save the rest of the movement for Treedle. And then just use these two basic attack dice to use its tackle, which does two damage with two dice, two symbols, so one energy cost already down to five out of eight. That's not too bad. Roll black die to modify the two damage. We got a plus one, so that's three. Well, get to break the shield at least. Then, Treadle is next. Can we put Treadle in range? One, two, three, four. It's not quite close enough. Treadle can't climb. Wonder if I should have just saved this movement for Treadle. Skip the tackle and let Treadle get in range of Fertilizer Bomb. I also wonder if Fertilizer Bomb is supposed to be a range attack. But somehow its nature symbol got symbol skipped. Maybe its range symbol got skipped too. But I've been playing it as a melee attack, so I'm not gonna change that now. So we're just gonna have to use the two symbols to move four. One, two, three, four. And it's not gonna use this token. Well, I mean, I could use it to move again. Yeah, let's use that. Let's use it to do it, move again. Tertullian still gets to go. What does it have at its sleeve? Two means it wants to protect itself. It's hanging back here. Let's roll up round two and hope for some shields for Propulpin's turn. There, we got a couple shields. So that will help. What does Propulpin want to do? It wants to use a Fin Slice on our highest speed Robomon, which is Fruit Flyer. Fin Slice is a two damage basic attack. Use a basic modifier. Two minus two is zero. Nice. A little bit of recovery time, a little bit of a breather for Fruit Flyer. Now Treadle can stand here and Fertilizer Bomb Propulfin, so I'm wondering if I should send Fruit Flyer over to the Tertullian. It's a lot more mobile. I think I will. Oh, I just realized I don't think I should have one-shotted that Tertullian. It says Tertullian's armor prevents three. I did 12 damage in one hit, but I would have needed to do 15. That was a long time ago. We'll play it correctly this time, I hope. So I'm going to use these two movement symbols to move Fruit Flyer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 with its flying. We're going to use the range 3 nature type attack, Fruit Cannon. We're going to do 1, 2, 3 special attack symbols for 4 damage with advantage because nature types have advantage against water, which Tertullian is. So 4 plus 3 is 7, which means it breaks 2 of the shields. Then Treadle can go, and we're going to use this token as another special attack. It's going to use a Fertilizer Bomb just at the basic level, only 4 damage. That does cost 3, up oh, and the Fruit Cannon costs 2. So Treadle's doing 4 damage with advantage against Propulfin. 4 plus 3 is 7, which is 1 away from knocking it out. And then Tertullian gets to go, 2. It's going to protect itself. 3 more health to burn through. Next round. Nice spread of symbols there. Propulfin goes first with a one, means fin slice on our highest speed, which is Fruit Flyer, which means it wants to go over toward Fruit Flyer. We can move six spaces, so it will. One, two, three, four. We'll get it into range. Fin slice for two damage with the black normal modifier. Minus two, zero again. So what were we scared of? It's too bad we're just out of position to be able to use Mist Attack on both of those water types. But alas, I'm tempted to just have Fruit Flyer use Tackle to do the last point of damage to Propulfin, save all the movement in the star for Treadle. You know what, I'm going to risk it. So we're going to do Basic Attack Symbol and the Token as a Basic Attack to do a Tackle for 2 damage against Propulfin. If we roll a minus 2, which is a 1 in 6, our plan has failed. 
and we get a zero. So we do the full two damage. We only needed one to finish off Propulfin, take him out. And then Tweedle can go and we can move two, four. One, two, three, four. We do need to spend one energy for Tweedle's Fruit Flyer's tackle. Tweedle needs to move one more time, but we can do that with this token. So we'll move into position here. And just use a single special attack along with three energy to Fertilizer Bomb again for four damage with advantage. Plus three is seven. Again, take out two shields. And Tertullian gets to go. Got a one this time, so it wants to bite our highest speed Wobblemon. Can move three, so it'll move up to Fruit Flyer. Attack with bite for two damage and a basic symbol here of plus two. That's four. Got a little bit cavalier. I do have a block for two, and I think it's worth one energy to block the other two with one of these wilds. Puts us into the next round. Both Robomon on my team have a single energy remaining, but again, we can overspend our energy, so go ahead and have Fruit Flyer use Fruit Cannon, spending two energy. That's fine, we'll spend an extra energy to turn this into a special. Use three specials for four damage with advantage. Plus two is six, which is actually exactly how much we needed. We actually played the three armor correct this time. Did collect a bit more damage in that fight though. We got two damage on Fruit Flyer on top of the three in Panda and one on Reginair. Wonder if this lady on the pier wants to fight too. Let's talk to her. This woman is complaining about her lure. It's just bobbing there and it's about as useful as a back pocket on a shirt. She needs one of them new electronic lures with all the fixins. If we bring her a lure that actually works, she'll give me some of the junk. I mean, cool stuff that she's been fishing out lately. We go to Adventure Card 16. It says, find a lure for the lady at the jetty. Add this to our quests. Quick review, I also need a comic book for Calvin, microchip for Ricky's mom, the power core for Mrs. Sands. It's a bit of a typo going on. I think this is flow got messed up here, but we'll ignore that in the prototype version and uh, sit on the bench for a while at 2718. You're about to sit when you notice a faded message scraped into the aged wood. There's a phone number, but the weather has long since scoured away the last part of it. However, there's something unique about the first five digits. Staring at it, you're sure you can figure out the missing numbers and make the long overdue call. This is a three star puzzle. The most difficult yet, please call my mother and tell her I'm fine. Got a job at ABC Inc. 85491. All right, let's take some time with that puzzle. I'll s try to come up with my own solution and then see what the entry says if it exists. Remember, every puzzle yields a four digit number. So if you ever feel that you need more clues for a puzzle, just remember that the answer is going to be four digits. Okay, so we've been thinking about it for, let's just call it a while, sitting on this bench. Made a few guesses and looked them up and I was wrong. But then when I figured out the answer, I was like, you know what? This is right. I looked it up and it was right. So I got it eventually. Let's take a look. We managed to figure out the last four digits of the phone number and, and head over to the Bolt Mart to borrow their phone. On the other end of the line, the mother is overjoyed to hear her son is all right, working with the underwater lab ABC Inc. As a thank you, she transfers 15 silver to the Bolt Mart and then the cashier hands you the coins. I get 10 silver and an investigation certification point. All right, so now I have an investigation and a research. And I did find that puzzle challenging, but that actually is another feature of the game, which is that you don't have to do most of the puzzles. So I haven't seen one yet that is part of the main storyline. The rules reference does say that there can be puzzles part of the main storyline, but if there are, there will be like ways around them or a lot of clues or something like that. Uh, but for those side events, I got extra silver, which is great, and a certification point. But it was not a mandatory puzzle by any means, even though I let my playthrough hold up for a while while I thought about it. So just a few more things to check. Let's talk to this guy here, standing outside this hut, 2318. He just says, interesting weather we've been having lately. Last week was so cold I saw a politician with his hands in his own pockets. This week is so hot my hens are laying hard boiled eggs. So there are some weather fluctuations going on. Might as well check out inside the hut as well. And it's this grumpy old woman managing the Bolt Mart. Springs, small reprogrammer, medium re reprogrammer, small repair kit, battery bolt, quick charge. So I do have one spring. I have a lot of silver. I haven't even used a quick charge yet. There are actually ways you can give your Robolon more 
energy in battle. Maybe I'll buy another couple just so that I have them on hand. So that's three. We'll get a couple more medium rate programmers too. That's three of those. We'll leave it at that for now. Venture into the woods, 38. I seem to be, I've gone out into the woods and found kids playing what seems to be competitive hopscotch, which I never played, so I'm not familiar with that too much. One of them named Twig, apparently all the people in this world wear name tags, asks me if I want to play. And this does seem to be a little bit of gambling with spare parts. So I'm going to make an endurance check to join the game. My endurance is minus one, but uh, have a little bit of fun anyway. No Robomon bonuses, so that'll be 2d6 minus one. A total of two. And I get up on one leg and join the group. I don't know if the lyrics to their version of the song, but I hum the melody and it reminds me of school, of times when I was bullied and times when I was victorious. I recall it so vividly that I'm quick to lose focus and as I make my third jump trip straight over twig and land in the dirt. Oh, you made me lose two. I lose a part of my choice. Again, that will be a wire. Round to six. I think the last thing to do is going to be talk to this person with the binoculars here. And that's a battle. Bird watcher Norris says not to ruffle any feathers, but among avian enthusiasts, I'm at the top of the pecking order. He has one Robomon, number 11, which is going to be... Hydron. I feel like I did this before. This time, the Hydron's ability, Squall, is going to be more likely to do extra damage because of all this water. But I guess let's send out my Grass types again. I love Fruit Flyer's Air type, but my Nature attacks. Roll up the Action Dice, and ooh, going first, but we did not get a lot of movement. Fruit Flyer's up first, and we can definitely get in range to use Fruit Cannon, but we'll need to use this die and the action token for movement, unless we start using these wilds. I think I'm going to proceed with caution. I'm going to use this movement die to move three, but that's it. We're going to save this in case we need to block damage, I think. I could use it to get into range and use a single star to attack for one damage. Although one damage with advantage, it's not bad. So let's hold off and hope try to take no damage. For Treadle, I'm going to use both of these as movement. So that's going to cost two energy to move one, two, three, four. I think we will use this token for movement as well. Five, six. I'll put it next to the tree. So next turn, Treadle can use climb in order to get four movement. Unless it gets hit by a squall, should put it into this water space, which was actually next to the tree still. So that might be okay. The best of a bad situation anyway. And we still have these two blocks. The Hydron is going to... Yep, that is Squall. So three is going to mean it uses Squall. And we fire a rock type, which we don't have. So we'll just say it's going after the closest, which is Treadle, which is a nature type. But water is disadvantaged against. So that's four damage with the red modifier. Minus three is only one we can use two damage block it but it does get moved into the nearest water space which will be here so next to the tree but it takes two movement to get out of water or even to move within water so that would take two movement just to move one space but also moves two movement to get onto the dock and then from there we move normally so let's roll up round two let me see a little bit more movement for treadle not a lot of special attacking going on Neither of them has an amazing normal attack. I think that's an important part of team building, is making sure you'll be able to use the red dice and the yellow dice. In this case, I've really built around doing nature type attacks. Fruit Flyer is first. So if we give it one movement, it's gonna get one, two, three into range. And then I'm gonna use its action token as a special attack. And I'm actually gonna use this die as well. So we're gonna use a fruit cannon for three costs two energy. Nature type has advantage, so three damage plus two is five. Takes off the armor and deals three. Bring it down to six. Then Treadle can move four since it's next to a tree, so one, two, three, four. And we still need to move oh, two more times. Did I mess that up? So now I don't have enough symbols to fertilizer bomb. I guess I'm just gonna move. I have to move twice. One, two, three, four. And I guess I'll just use Clamp. It costs two energy. I don't remember if I've clamped before, but we'll use two basic attack dice to do three damage with a normal modifier. Three plus two is five. Puts Hydron one away. Oh, we need to roll a d4 for the trap symbol. And we actually got a one, which means Hydron is trapped. And this is the first time we get to use this trap token, which is just going to be a reminder that Hydron has disadvantage on any attack it uses. 
and also it can't move. Once a Robomon gets trapped during a battle, further trap attempts in the future require a d6 roll instead of a d4, but you still need a 1 to successfully trap it, so it's less likely to get trapped in the future. I already forgot, was that 5 damage? So I think Hydron is 1 away from being knocked out, but it still gets one more turn, even though it will be acting with disadvantage. And it wants to use... Oh, there's our, it wants to use 2, which is going to be a Water Mortar against a Rock or Fire type. Have a target the closest Robomon instead. Water Mortar is 3 damage, range 7, Water type. It has disadvantage no matter what, although it would have had it anyway because it's attacking in nature with a Water, but... So 3... Minus two is one, and we can go ahead and use this block. And then we'll just have Fruit Flyer use its action token to do a one damage Fruit Cannon, but with advantage that will be plus three for a total of four. We only needed one finish off Hydron. And for winning, I get two silver and a small repair kit. And you know, I still kind of want a water type. Let's give it another shot at the Robomon Finder. Let's spend a battery and roll these up. Five and one puts me pretty close to Robomon 11. If I just change this five into a six, it actually becomes versus Robomon number three. But three is the fruit flyer. That's what I already did. I think I'm just going to re-roll it. I don't like any of my options. Six and two is nothing. But it's one more than finding 11. So we'll spend another battery to change the two into a three. That puts us into the three, six cell, which is Robomon 11, which is Hydron again. I knew that number was familiar. Now we are facing it as a wild Robomon. The shield again. Let's bring out Fruit Flyer and Sparky. Let's see what we've got. All right, so Fruit Flyer's first and then Sparky. We have one timer out of four. Let's hit it hard out of the gate with... Fruit Flyers. Hmm. Should we use this wild? Yeah, I'm going to use a wild. So we'll use two for Fruit Cannon plus one to use this as a wild. It's a special along with this special. And sure, let's use its token as special as well. So it's going to be attack for four with advantage. Plus three is seven. Minus two is five. Which means it has four left. You know what? I can reprogram a Hydron with four health using a medium re reprogrammer, right? So I'm going to spend Sparky's turn to toss this medium reprogrammer. And, uh, that didn't go great. Okay, so Hydron is going to use its turn to peck the Robomon with the most health, which is Sparky. Peck is a two point attack with normal modifier. Minus two is zero, so we can try again. But I don't know if I want to do damage is the problem. So again, the rules, my reprogrammer is not spent. So I'm going to go ahead and use it again on Fruit Flyer's turn because I don't want to accidentally knock out the Hydron. There we go. That's an 8. 8 is definitely more than 4. So now we have a Water Robomon on the team. Get our Ally Robomon card. Take a closer look at Hydron. 7 health, 9 energy, flying, going 2 movement, 20 speed is pretty slow. Heck, Water Mortar, and Squall. That's a nice attack. A little bit of a charisma boost there as well. And we also need to see the journal entry for Hydron. It says, manages freshwater fish populations to prevent overbreeding. It can join the archive next to Fruit Flyer. The question is, who has to go back into the save box? I feel like Fruit Flyer's been doing a pretty good job. I like the flying. I'm wondering if Treadle has served its usefulness. I have a sweet spot for Treadle, and I actually don't love Armadigo. Getting a Charisma boost from Hydron, so we're, we'll basically be swapping that out from Armadigo. Armadigo's rock type is nice, or earth type. Earth has advantage against fire and electric. But if we want to be strong against electric, we have nature. That's what Fruit Flyer and Treadle are for. And against fire, we now have Hydron. And not to be cruel, but we haven't even used Armadigo yet. We haven't formed that Robomon bond. I think we're going to let Armadigo rest in our save box. Longside Burn Viper. And that is the end of the jetty. So the question is whether to go north or east. I wonder if this Alloy Province map is anything to be followed. Looks like this is where we started actually. Then we went here, 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 and now we're here. So if we go north, it looks like there's a castle according to our map. 
or a chapel or something. And then if we were to go east, there's a big city. So let's actually head north before we go over to this branch of the continent here, which means we're going to go to page 20. Of course, we'll actually explore the Carnelian Cemetery next, a uh, cemetery. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, next time. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Subscribe so we can get more subscribers and bye.